interesting, highly interesting developments here as the old year comes to an end. Let's look at some of these. First of all, the economic crisis in Eastern Europe. And that, of course, uh, includes Russia, which is now under heavy attack from the International Monetary Fund and its stooges, London and New York, calling the shots on that one. These are not markets. These are economic attacks. This is economic warfare, not the workings of some mythical neoliberal market. But now, in the middle of all of this, We've got a, a shining ray of light. We have Belarus. <coughs> Gold is where you find it. Gold is where you find it. And this is now Belarus under President Lukashenko. And Lukashenko, for various reasons, is particularly hated by the Anglo-American elites. They would like to give him the Gaddafi treatment, or at least a color revolution, if they could. But uh, Lukashenko is forewarned. He knows what a color revolution looks like. It's been tried a couple of times there. These are people who have seen the chaos of a color revolution in Ukraine right next door. They've seen what it has meant for places like Libya and Syria. I hope there are not too many dupes and useful idiots running around in Belarus because this government has now established something which is of universal value, and that is economic self-defense. The government of Belarus, under President Lukashenko, in the capital of Minsk, has declared, first of all, if you want to export capital from Belarus, great, you pay 30%. You pay a tax of 30%. Almost one-third of your flight capital will go to help the treasury. So if you're a libertarian, if you're a ripoff artist, if you're a leech, a parasite, a tick on the body of Belarus and you try to get out of town with your real gotten gains, great, you're going to take a haircut of 30 percent. This is how to treat speculators. This is how to treat those who go for economic warfare and call that their liberty. That's no liberty. That's license. That's sociopathic behavior. Belarus has shown the way. Remember in the previous crisis back in 1998, which is now on everybody's lips, it was Mahathir Mohammed of Malaysia who blazed the trail, showing under those conditions back then that a country that put in capital controls and exchange controls would have an easier time of riding out that crisis than at the present time. So Belarus says 30% tax on capital exports. It also means that it's all reportable. I, I imagine it means that you have to report it, and if they don't want you to do it, they're going to tell you, no, you can't do it at any price. Forget about the 30%. Uh, but it's uh, this is capital controls, exchange controls, and then some. It's a exchange control with real teeth. This is exemplary. Go Belarus. And then the other thing they've done is if you're bringing, if you're bringing uh, an exchange into the country, if you bring in dollars, euros, or yen, or whatever it is, you can't just hoard that. You can't just sit on that. You've got to change, exchange one half of that for a Belarus ruble. So you've got to change it into Belarus rubles, and that simply means that your export earnings will be a support operation to buy Belarus rubles to prop up the currency, to support the national currency, and to counteract the baleful effects of flight capital. Now, remember, things have gotten much worse since 1998. In 1998, we had not had the uh, general deregulation of the derivatives, in particular credit default swaps. That happened in the year 2000 with the Commodity Exchange Modernization Act signed by Clinton, whose wife now thinks she deserves to be president, based on what? Based on knocking down Glass-Steagall in 99 and liberalizing derivative plague for the world in 2000. Well, uh, as a result of those actions, uh, since 2000, we've had this tremendous growth, this cancerous growth, hypertrophy of derivatives, and the derivatives are being used to attack Russia. 
But Belarus has put up an effective uh, barrier. This is a small country. Uh, it would be wonderful. The NATO people would love to have a color revolution in Belarus, knock off Lukashenko, and bring the uh, NATO potential borders all the way into historic uh, Russia, right? Practically to uh, Smolensk. They'd get Minsk, and they would like to get very close to Smolensk, and uh, let's hope they don't. Because we don't want this. This is the road to World War III. Therefore, what Belarus has done is actually a step for peace. Now, on the internal front, if you go back and read Putin's press conference in um, Russia, in the Kremlin, last week, you'll see that he was asked about a coup d'etat. He was asked, are you ready to fight off a coup d'etat? The answer coming in the next segment here on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Topley reporting from Washington, D.C. Now, I'm going to repeat this later on in the show, but let's give you ways to express support for Reverend Edward Pinckney. He has been in jail now for eight days since the 15th of December. He was handcuffed in the courtroom, dragged out. Not be on bail. That's already outrageous. You should be free on bail to organize your appeal. No, take him to the county jail, not even take him further away, uh, hellhole of the Michigan criminal justice system, of course, under the despicable Governor Snyder, who serves uh, Wall Street. And Congressman Upton is there, too, and Whirlpool in this company town. So uh, Pinckney needs your support. Send him a Christmas card. Send him greetings. Send him a Christmas card with a message of political support.